how they work, how to build them, how to use them, that kind of thing. Us memory athletes uh, use them in most memory sports events, but they're not only useful for memory sports, they're useful for students, um, you know, people trying to memorize lines in a play, uh, stuff in everyday life, people at work. Um, they can be used by anybody for almost anything. So um, let's, um, so memory palaces, okay. Uh, they're known by a few things. Um, if I use any of these other methods, just know that I'm using them uh, using the names interchangeably. So like Memory Palace, um, it's been known as the Mind Palace, which is what I think they called it in the Sherlock show. Uh, you might also hear about the Journey Method, the Method of Loci. Uh, I've heard Roman Room thrown around a couple times. Um, I don't really use that. The other three I'll kind of use interchangeably with the term Memory Palace. So if I do use any of those throughout the course of this video, just know that it, I'm talking about the same thing, okay? Uh, so Memory Palace is kind of the main term I would use for this. So they can be used to memorize just about anything. Um, now they're especially useful when the order of the information you're memorizing is important. Um, it's not just for things where you need to know the order, like if you just need to know like a list, like for grocery shopping or something. Um, it's obviously still super useful and awesome, uh, but it's just extra handy if the order of the information is important as well. Uh, they can be used for short-term or long-term memorization. So if you're, whether you're memorizing stuff for like an exam coming up, or you're memorizing, um, you know, 10,000 digits of pi, and that's going to take months and months, maybe years for you to get to that point. Um, obviously, a long-term project, um, it can be used for either either or. Okay. Uh, so what you do basically, very simple. You pick a place that you know well. Okay. Um, and then, um, so in like in this example, I would use where I live. Um, if you want to follow along, uh, you. Can, maybe do the same use where you live or if you're sitting you're watching this video at a different location you can even use like your surrounding area and what you want to do is walk through that place in a set and deliberate path okay you're going to take what you need to memorize and place each piece of information in a different uh, location or stop uh, throughout that journey okay now once you're done memorizing you're going to go back to the beginning of that journey the fir or the first location in your memory palace and you're going to walk that same path again and you're going to recall the information that you memorized. So um, for example, if we're memorizing um, like a shopping list, let's just think of a few random things. So uh, if I were to make a palace just on the spot, I pick where I am right now, my home. Okay. So the, the thing about the path that you create as well, you want it to be a logical sort of like innate uh, natural path that you would walk through that home okay uh, it should make sense uh, so i would start maybe like on my front porch my front stairs kind of area and let's say that first item uh we need a bunch of bananas okay so i would just like literally imagine a bunch of bananas all over the place uh, if i want to make it extra animated i could add some monkeys or something like that eating them um, and you know, I'd be hearing the monkey sounds, so that would also be like a, a little kind of key or a trigger for me to remember that. Uh, we walk in, and then my entryway, if the next item is like some eggs, I'd imagine uh, a bunch of eggs maybe smashed all over the walls on the ceiling. Um, maybe there's a bunch of co eggs cooking on the floor somehow, I don't know. Uh, again, it can be uh, super animated and exciting. It can be boring, uh, but in my experience, the more lively eventful even gross or silly uh the more memorable it will be okay so we got bananas we got eggs third location i turn into my kitchen um what makes the most sense there is probably my sink so i would if the next item on the list is like uh, we need some milk or a jug of milk or whatever i'd imagine the sink's just full of milk okay easy um or you know maybe there's a cow somebody milking a cow into my sink something like that i get even crazier the milk being poured or overflowing my sink for me would be enough to remember uh, and then if we need a loaf of bread for item number four, uh, we can make the fourth location in the palace. Okay, so we leave the sink. Uh, my stove oven area is probably a good location for. Um, we can open it and imagine there's an actual loaf of bread baking. So that one is actually like a really good one for that location. And again, let's invoke our senses. I would imagine like smelling the bread. I could smell baked bread coming out of the oven. That would again help me remember that. Uh, and then let's say like we're, we need all this stuff, uh, we're going camping, okay? So we need some bags of ice. So my fifth location would be uh, probably the island in my kitchen where we like prepare food and stuff. So I put 
maybe uh, I can either imagine a bunch of bags of ice just like on the island, or if we want to get crazy, we can imagine, um, again, taking the ice theme, maybe the island itself is like encased in ice and we need to chisel away to get through to it to use it or something. So like it's, we're touching it, it's cold, it's wet. Uh, again, that would help with mem remembering the ice part. Uh, yeah, and just like covering it in ice would help us remember that we need ice. So what, what do we do? We go back to the beginning of that, uh, of that memory palace or that journey and we start at the beginning. So location one was the front area. Again, I needed bananas, right? Uh, and then we walk through, open the door. Okay, there's eggs all over the place. That's number two. Turn to my right in the kitchen there. There's my sink full of milk. Okay, we need milk. Bread in the oven. Okay, we need some bread. And then my uh, island is full of ice, covered in ice, whatever. We need some ice. So those are our five items, okay? So that's just a really quick, simplified version of how we would construct and use a memory palace like really quick, okay? Um, memory palace ideas, okay? So you can use your house, other places you've lived, uh, friends' houses, relatives' houses. I use, like, I have one with my grandparents, uh, some friends' houses from back in the day, houses I've lived in. Uh, you can use schools you've went to, um, places you've worked, gyms, theaters, uh, malls, you know, stores, churches, restaurants, like, whatever, whatever you think of. Uh, you can use, like, neighborhoods that you know well, like, um, whether it's, like, you know, oh, I got this, like, path I like to walk from my home uh, to my park or you know around your block or something if there's a few landmarks you can use along the way uh, those can work great uh, maps or levels from video games honestly work pretty good too uh, there's a few video games like mario super mario 64 golden eye 64 are a couple games i use uh, and i got a lot more kind of like ideas i want to use from other video games as well uh, video games work great uh, i know a lot of memory athletes that incorporate various even various types of video games. Uh, I've heard of people cr like creating digital palaces, like using, um, I don't know if it was in Minecraft or using some sort of software, but um, there's lots of cool things out there too. Uh, a lot of people prefer just like tangible, like familiar places that they have connections with, which I also get, because you want it's good to have like a connection uh, with the palace, but it's not a necessity. So again, it, it all comes down to personal preference. You know, you want to do whatever works for you. Okay, so um, yeah, I would write out, like if you're just starting out, write out a list of palace ideas, potential palaces you could use, okay? That way, if you need one on the fly, um, and you, you, like sometimes I've found myself, if I need a palace and, uh, oh shoot, I need to create a new palace for this thing, and sometimes when I'm on the spot, I can't think of something, but if I got a list, so I got like a list on my phone, uh, I can go, oh right, there, that, that was an idea I had like a few months ago, um, I can use that place. That, so having a list of ideas is helpful because then that, that, that gives you something you can just pull from. Um, I, I'd say like if you're new to this, 10, maybe 20 locations tops per palace is probably what you want to start out with. Obviously, if your goals are lofty or you got lots of things you need to memorize, um, you, you might want to go bigger than 20. But for now, maybe start with 5, 10, 50 maybe 20 tops but like i have some that have you know 30 40 50 60. i don't go too much higher i know people with palaces that have hundreds of locations again it all comes down to what works for you okay um and what your goals are and how often you're going to be using them but it's good it's always good to have a bunch like in the uh, kind of in the can ready to go and then a few ideas at least ready to go so if you need to create one like quick uh you, you can pull one easily okay um now, final tips, okay, there's not really a limit to how many locations you can have in a palace uh, or in an area of a palace. But in my opinion, simpler is often better. So again, you don't want to like, okay, so for example, um, when I walk into a room like in, in a memory palace, if I'm creating one, um, I often stick to like that room as a location and that's it. Sometimes I'll use two locations in a room. Like, oh, okay, I'll use a bed and then I turn around and like there's a closet or a dresser. Okay, I'll use two locations there. Sometimes three locations, probably almost never four. Often it's one though. But I also know memory athletes, um, some competitors, some guys I've competed against and stuff that will use like 20 or 30 locations in a room. Like they'll say, okay, this dresser's got all these drawers. Okay, that's like... That's eight locations, and then we got a bed with two pillows. That's like three locations there. If you you know, and then uh, the closet has a uh, all these different shelves. There's like they go like, in my opinion, like completely overboard. But you know what? That works for them, and that's great. For me, that gets too cluttered. Um, and get me get a little confused upstairs for me. So, 
Um, I tend to keep it a bit simpler. I keep it to one, sometimes two, um, three tops, almost never four or more, okay? So simpler is often better, but again, whatever works for you. Invoke the senses where possible as well. Don't forget that. So again, uh, in the example I gave, like in the first one, uh, I could hear the monkeys eating the bananas. I could also pretend I was eating one, right? Bananas have a distinct taste. Um, we can smell the bread in the oven. So use your senses where possible. The last thing I'll say is, uh, if possible, pick a location. So when you're creating a palace, you wanna pick a location that has something for your images to interact with, okay? That thing can act as an anchor for those images. So like if your location, like don't, if, if you can avoid it, don't pick just like a boring plain corner in a room with nothing there. Pick something that has a piece of furniture or like a television or, um, you know, different, whatever it can be, a chair, so something like that. Um, and that way, if you're having trouble remembering what the image or images were that you're trying to, to remember, like again, if it's stuff off a list um, or you're trying to remember a bunch of numbers and you have images associated with those numbers, right? So they're, uh, you're trying to remember like a phone number or something. Um, sometimes remembering what was in the location will remind you. So if you remember that, like, let's use our grocery list again. Let's imagine we had the bananas and the eggs together in one area. And we couldn't remember what those were though, but we did remember that they were like in whatever random location. Let's say we used a bathroom at the, in this example. We remembered that the banana was flushing a bunch of eggs down the toilet. So if I'm like, oh shoot, what was in the bathroom again? All right, so the toilet is our thing there. What was in the toilet? Oh right, I remember an egg breaking in on the seat and dripping in. And then I remember a banana uh, you know, peeling itself and then like an arm coming out and flushing. And this, I realize this sounds crazy, but you, a lot of us memory athletes, we have to get real creative to remember stuff. So what I'll, all I'm saying is like, if you have uh, something in that location to, to be interacted with, again, it acts as an anchor. So sometimes you remember what that thing was and then we kind of like reverse engineer our memory from that and you go, oh, right. The thing that dropped on that and then the banana flush. Okay, so it was a banana and an egg. Got it. Um, Again, it's I'm simplifying it, but that's kind of for the sake of the example. So, um, yeah, that's kind of all I got to say on the matter. Um, memory palaces, again, they're, so, they're sort of like a cornerstone. I shouldn't say sort of. They are a cornerstone of memory sports and success there. But, again, it's not just for memory sports. It's to remember you can use them to remember anything, okay? They're useful for uh, any type of memory thing you have, okay? Uh, but so that's, that's all I got to say. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, if there's anything I missed or anything you want me to cover in a future video, let me know. If you want any uh, memory coaching or you just want to chat memory, uh, hit me up, uh, bradenmemory.com. Um, and I'll have some links below and all that. So yeah, thanks for watching.